Hey everybody, what's up? This is Bruce with Zabowski Studio, out for another plein air adventure. I'm gonna paint this house, uh, this white house right here, on a eight by 10 uh, panel. And we're gonna get going, thanks for joining me. And if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe if this is first time watching my videos. Thanks a lot, everyone else. Thank you also. Starting with my raw umber as usual to get some base. It's actually, the house is on a hill. So I'm going to strike in where I want the road. It'll be a nice little diagonal. Hey everybody, this is Bruce with Zabowski Studio. This is a little remastered version of this video with uh, brand new audio. So even if you've seen the video, there's going to be probably a little different commentary. Um, I think the audio issue might, who knows, I recently did a major Windows update thing. The whole thing that was in the news with the crash the computer thing. So maybe it did something in my PC volume settings. I have to poke around on that. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, here I am doing my usual one color umber block. And I find I am doing this probably about 95% of the time now. Because I just find it's the fastest way to get a sketch of your subject in get the shadows nailed, which is super critical, especially at a time of day. I tend to um, have the opportunity to go out and plain air paint early in the morning. So that uh, changes quickly. And of course, late afternoon changes quickly also. So it's just a quick way to see if your, your uh, layout that you have for your composition is going to work for you. Um, I know there's, of course, a lot of artists that do thumbnails and that sort of thing. I've played around with that once or twice, but honestly, uh, for me, I just like to get that energy in right off the bat and just go for it. Usually when I'm driving and I already see something that interests me, I immediately just uh, kind of know the element that caught my eye that I want to build on in the painting. And also what in interested me in this scene was the fact that the house is you're looking right straight on at the house and I like to challenge the viewer and uh, myself as an artist to show dimension in something like that. Um, it does help that the little uh, way the house in the back part kind of uh, sticks out a little bit in an L shape to offer the angled roof lines but also that bay window really helps project out and cast a shadow. I especially like to do that when I find uh, some facades of buildings like downtown or urban buildings where you're looking kind of cropped in on the building straight on and you have awnings sticking out and all that. Uh, one of my favorite things to do. And usually I just like to get, of course, that shadow tone of that recessed porch in there. Working on the shadows in the grass. I don't ha really have a systematic approach to painting what I decide to paint plain air other than the umber sketch is pretty much regular right now to really nail the shadows like I mentioned. Um, other parts that are going to be dictated by what's in your subject and what might be issues to deal with. Say if a, a car's uh, parked there that you're painting to add to the composition, you want to put certain things like that in quickly in case uh, someone comes along, gets in the car and drives away. Uh, you could take a picture, of course, but uh, it still might need some basic lines in there to show placement of the car as an example. Just putting a base tone of that window, that's going to be pretty cool. It's a very uh, nice little architectural detail in this house. And you'll see later on as the shadows shift on the house, it's tempting to say, oh, I like that shadow better. I want, I want to use that shadow. Well, you got to be careful about that in terms of if you just one shadow, you got to look, see where the other shadows are at that point in time. It's possible to change all the shadows. This subject wouldn't be too difficult to do, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily get in the habit of that. It could be uh, dangerous to uh, have awkward different uh, light sources. Just knocking in some base darks for the tree uh, in the front yard of the house that's casting the shadow. I liked that effect. That's what kind of stopped me as I was driving by. And the palette I used was pretty much, I have a lemon yellow, 
a uh, Cad Yellow Deep, Ultramarine Blue. I believe I was using Cobalt Blue, Titanium White, some Cad Red Light, and Elizabeth Crimson, I believe was the cool red. Pretty much use similar colors like that in my paintings. Occasionally I'll shake up the palette to test out new options, limited palettes, and that sort of thing. This is a little more broad. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just get a base tone of the correct color to about what I feel maybe is 90%. And I get that in all over the, all over the, the panel and, or the painting surface. And that way I can then judge in comparison to other colors what uh, might need more warmth, more coolness, that sort of thing. And uh, another way of starting is to start with something you know for color or, or shape or both that you can nail very easily. And that'll be a nice way to key other parts to the painting. In hindsight, if I do this over again, I would have, uh, before I put in the shadows on the house, I would have put in the uh, sunlight on the house. But uh, because you'll see what happened a little later is the shadows appeared a little too dark. I can lighten those up. You don't want to make the shadows too dark. You you want to have air in your shadows. And uh, it's amazing how light that shadow can go and still have a sense of bright sunlight. Then I'll just tend to, you know, kind of uh, make the sunlit side a little more chromatically strong and intense, whereas the shadow will have a little grayness to it. Knocking in that nice little sidewalk that goes up the hill. Just getting a little more contrast in that there. Now I'm working on the trees up above there. When I ended up finishing the painting and the trees, uh, I had just kind of initially blocked them in with some base tones. But I found that I liked the effect of suggested trees. So I didn't really do much with them after that. Now comes the fun part of popping in some uh, intense color, like the red on the foundation of the house. And especially with all the greens around. What you might be careful of is sometimes in real life, someone might be using a very acidic color on their house or in whatever you're painting. That might be, in reality, when you're trying to paint it, just sticking out like a sore thumb. So feel free to tone it down a bit to fit into the rest of the composition. Other times that might be the focal point of your painting is the garish color someone used maybe on a what they call painted lady Victorians with the different color schemes people use. But um, you just want to be careful of that. And I was fortunate this time to be in the shade of a tree. I did have to keep stopping every so often and pulling the easel further away from the car into as the shadow of the tree was shifting. But... Uh, worked out pretty well. Lately it seems I've been working in sunlight quite a bit and learning how to adjust my colors accordingly because most of the time I might not have an option to set up my umbrella especially if uh, you're along the coast and it's very breezy. Now here's the icing on the cake when you get the knock in the lights and how it, everything just starts to pop. It really uh get you excited at this stage, you know, and, and you're like, oh boy, I hope I don't, I hope I don't mess this up and that sort of thing. But, and I like using these flats that I've been using lately. It really helps you chisel in shapes like this type of painting. Very useful for that. Then here, the other side of the house uh, of that uh, building kind of attached to the front part of the house, like an L, if you were to look at it from the side view. Very carefully knocking in a few bits of that light tone interjected into the leaves I painted. Just planting, pull, plant, and pull. Pick up more color so you don't sully that with the green paint underneath. And that kind of defines those foreground leaves. Okay, now we're getting into some uh, frontal light here on the building. Really starts to define the dimension of the house. And I mixed a little bit of the lemon yellow and lizard crimson to get it warmed up a bit. 
And I really wish I would have had the some cad yellow, uh, uh, cad yellow light, uh, more regular cad yellow, not the deep that I had. I really find that more useful color. The lemon yellow is just not cutting it for me. I'm just not one of my favorites. And sometimes rather than trying to create a really d straight, dark shape, it's better sometimes to paint around it to define it. That works out pretty well. So that's what I'm doing at this stage is just putting in different bits of highlight on the house. And it's really going to be, it's really tricky sometimes, depending on your scale that you're painting an object like this house, for instance, on how much detail to put into the windows in terms of suggestive reflections and uh, curtains or things like that. And sometimes it may be very boring if the house is facing the sun all the time. A lot of people just have their curtains pulled because of the sun blaring into the house all the time. And you may want to have it a little more inviting and open a window and maybe have a curtain slightly blowing out of a window to suggest movement in a stagnant um, architectural painting. Defining some stairs for the porch. This part was really fun, kind of just popping in some lights. All of a sudden there was the porch. It was very cool. Really liked and uh, really enjoyed doing that. And the key to all this little part here with the wet paint that's already there is get your paint wet enough. Uh, a lot of times I just end up using terps. Not a lot because my paints fairly has a good oil content, so I don't need much. But you don't want it runny. Um, some people use mediums, which I have before. And uh, just kind of adjusting a few tones in the grass there to start getting more relationships of tones and shapes talking to one another so I can figure out what I want to do next to enhance certain parts. Now I'm just adjusting that major shadow I made on the bushes, creating a little variation within that just a hint. Don't need much because you don't want to break that up. But if you're working realistically, you need some element of some dim more dimension. I usually go for like three values, light, middle, dark value. Cutting in around that foreground tree to paint the trees in the background with a lighter green. The sunlight's hitting back there. So it's a cool effect. Good way to chisel out that foreground tree. Nice technique for that. And I really like how this is popping and, and, and really has a presence. Just a simple portrait of a house. Always been intrigued about uh, people's lives that they have in their house. You look at the yard and you think, wow, that'd be a cool place to hang out or whatever. Adjusting some, uh, getting some more darker tones. Now, when I'm putting the darker tone over the shadow, like that's a lot of light toned wet paint. Pick up that dark value and just put one or two little spots for leaves. Don't mess around too much. It'll start to muddy. And then uh, pick up more paint. So we're getting ready to wrap up uh, this video here. Getting back to real-time commentary. So I hope this audio clip on this one's uh, much better. Let me know. And, uh, of course, if you've seen it before, I invite you to watch it again to make sure uh, there's uh, some maybe information that uh, I did not repeat because it's a whole new audio. So again, I apologize for that whole problem. I want you guys to enjoy the videos, and uh, I'll try to, try to do better in the future. Okay. Okay, everybody, this wraps up this plein air adventure. Thanks for joining me, and... Uh, that's what I got going on right now. We'll take a closer look at it when I get home. So uh, see you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm home and uh, I'm going to do analysis of the painting. Overall, I think it came out pretty good, but let's take a close-up look and we'll talk about it. So here's the painting. It's this little house I've passed multiple times as I'm uh, traveling up to work. And I like that it's kind of on a little hill. And then the house is straight. I like that aspect. Uh, I the palette I used uh, 
which I didn't go over. I'll go over later in a moment. But uh, has lemon yellow on it, and I really don't like that lemon yellow. I'm going to go back to my cad yellow medium and my cad yellow light because uh, I want to overlay a more warmer uh, kind of white on that. The lemon yellow with a little bit of cad red light did okay, but not great. Overall, I like the sense of light. I like how I simplified some trees back here. I won't do much more with those. A couple sky holes. I don't want to go crazy. And uh, I like the effects I got with the uh, little concrete stairs they have in sides of little grassy areas from the sidewalk to have access to the yard. The shadow is pretty cool. Uh, I'm liking it. Need some, need some uh, cleanup. I'll pay attention to this a little more later. It's not too bad, but there are some things i got to fix it looks like. Uh, but hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I invite you to subscribe if you're new to watching the channel. And for everyone else, thank you for continuing to uh, check out the videos. It really means a lot. And until the next one, bye.